Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the shawl collar cardigan, which is what I'm wearing here today. I'll be discussing some of its features, how to style it, and how to wear it effectively. So to be honest, I haven't worn shawl collar cardigans before this year, and I haven't worn many cardigans at all overall. Uh, the reason is I've always associated them with sort of Normcore, Mr. Rogers, Suburban Dad, uh, that sort of vibe. Um, and being sort of young and interested in a style that's more urban and kind of rakish, I thought that they were more middle-aged and older in terms of the style that they were conveying. And so I avoided them. I only wore thin cardigans, sort of like a waistcoat, under tailoring, and I never wore them as a prominent feature, and never any chunky cardigans. But based on what I've been seeing on social media, particularly from the Zanification, Zane Lim, um, I've noticed that the shawl collar cardigan in particular has gotten a lot of positive press and uh, it's been styled in a way that I can get on board with. And so I thought I'd give them a try and I bought this one from Spear and McKay. It's an oatmeal Donegal. So oatmeal has the base color and then it's got a lot of flecks of Donegal uh, yarns in them. So blue, kind of a tan, orangish tan, and some other colors speckled throughout. Um, and I really like that. And so my first principle for shawl collar cardigans is to get one that's interesting in some way. If you want to maintain still a uh, sort of youthful presentation while still rocking the shawl collar cardigan. So having a Donegal flecked one is a good idea. Um, Kent Wang makes a vanilla shawl collar cardigan, which also has kind of peppery spots in it, which is also appealing for the same reason. And then you want to think of the cardigan in terms of how you would style it so that it doesn't look sort of suburban, but it looks more interesting, sartorial, and stylistic. Cardigan is appealing because of its versatility, shawl collar cardigan particularly. It can be worn as a sport coat replacement if you don't want to wear tailoring. It can be worn as a top layer in cold weather. It has both a formal vibe to it as well as being relaxed. So if you're at home, you can sort of open it up, wear it as is, and see it as a sort of slouchy lounge garment. At the same time, if you button it up, you can wear it for most workplaces, sort of smart casual workplaces, uh, business casual workplaces, and you'll look better dressed than most people there. So it has that range of possibility from something you wear for business to something you wear watching TV at home, which is really a lot of its versatility. Another aspect of the versatility of the shawl collar cardigan is you can also wear them as something right under a larger piece of outerwear. So they can serve as an outer garment on their own, but you can also put them under an overcoat and use them as a layering item. I like to do this particularly with large polo coats that have big lapels. So the shawl collar acts kind of like a scarf in that case, because when you wear them under the polo coat, the shawl looks pretty much like a scarf. And it's actually better than a scarf because with a scarf you have just a thin piece of cloth around your neck, whereas with the shawl collar you have the full sweater, obviously giving you more warmth in cold weather. And as I said, you can also wear it closed and open in various ways. But usually I wear it with top, top three buttons closed and then the two bottom buttons open as you would with other waistcoats as you would with um, a sport coat. You leave the bottom button open on a sport coat. Um, you can also sort of open this button here and what that does, the top button uh, out of five, what that does is it lengthens the lapel. And what I like with a shawl collar cardigan, my sort of second criterion, is having a large lapel. Right? The shawl should be substantial, should, make, uh, should be present to the viewer, to the wearer. And you can enhance that by opening this top button, which lengthens the lapel line. So I also recommend kind of flattening it out and making it a feature of the cardigan. I'm wearing it here with a, uh, my one-piece collar shirts from the Gaudery, which also enhances this area. And that's another thing that the shawl helps to achieve. Right? It creates this V that points to your face, which is what you really want to do with the V of a, a tailored jacket, just the same. Right? So the shawl can achieve that effect. And at the same time, you can wear it over various things because one thing you want to avoid when wearing an outer layer is kind of doubling the collar that you have. Right? So if you have a polo shirt on with a regular collar, you don't want to wear a piece of knitwear that has the same collar on top. 
because it kind of doub doubles it and looks ridiculous, like you're wearing two shirts, right? Which was a thing at some point, but not a good thing. With a shawl collar, you're not likely to be wearing another shawl shaped collar underneath. So that means you can wear almost anything under here. Turtleneck, regular dress shirt neck, uh, this sort of one piece collar, right? You can uh, crew neck, right? All of that will be something different than what you have on top, which again adds to that versatility of the shawl collar. So think about the lapel and how that will be emphasized. Um, you can also open it up entirely, as I said earlier, if you're thinking about sort of lounging around, kind of a nice uh, relaxing uh, outer cardigan that way, um, where you can again button it up if you want to look more formal. Uh, this particular cardigan is chunky. I always recommend getting chunky ones uh, to go along with that big lapel, have some substance to them. Uh, the side effect of that is that they do add weight to your size. They give you a sense of love handles, an impression of love handles here, especially if you're not super thin, which most of us are not. Well, what you can do there is keep the bottom buttons open. By keeping them open, again, you sort of spread the fabric. If you have it closed, it clings more to your sides and your hips and enhances those love handles. Right, so leave that open or entirely open to counteract that effect. I also recommend pulling them down so they're not bunched. If you start bunching them up and pulling them up, right, they're adding substance around here. It looks kind of sloppy. Uh, if you put your hand in your pocket and pull them up, uh, they can also have that sort of effect of adding uh, an inner tube or a spare tire, as it were, to your uh, abdomen or your stomach area. So keep them kind of long and smooth as well. Keep the bottoms open to enhance the flattering effect rather than to make them less flattering. So some shawl collar cardigans have patch pockets like these do, and they, these are applied fabric to the outer layer of the um, garment. Others have more of a welt pocket where the patch itself is hidden. I would say the patch is more common, but also can add substance to your waist. So if you want to keep it as sleek as possible, go with ones that have welts on them as opposed to the patches. But again, kind of difficult to find. Uh, William Lockie at Baltzar uh, are some of those that have the welt only. So you can try those out. Um, other flattering features I would say are ribbing. I would always go with a rib cardigan, though there are also some that have cable knitting. Those are equally good. Um, go with raglan sleeves, which is sort of the way that the sleeve is attached to the shoulder area, uh, having that extra uh, line of knit material helps enhance the shoulders and make them look even more flattering. Um, Button-wise, these have horn buttons on them. You'll be likely to find many shawl collar cardigans with leather covered buttons. And those are more traditional, more old fashioned. I was originally opposed to them, but now I find them equally appealing in, in their own way. So if you want to emphasize the button, which would go along with my principle of wearing shawl collar cardigans that are uh, interesting in some way, then find ones that have the leather covered buttons. They may be a little bit less versatile though because the buttons are more noticeable. Whereas with a standard horn button, you can kind of blend them in and they go well with everything as opposed to calling the eye or calling the attention to the color of the leather button, which would usually be like a rust brown. So it depends on what you're going to wear them with um, and choosing what kind of button you prefer. So also in terms of buttons, a lot of shawl collar cardigans are not all have this additional button here on the right side, and there's a loop over here. You bring this across like so, and loop it over that, and it enables you to kind of button up around your neck area, to keep you even warmer if you're really cold and you want to keep your neck protected. Also adds initial interest to the way you can wear the shawl collar cardigan. So this is something that you can decide on whether you like or not. And then lastly, in terms of buttons, try to find ones that have reinforced buttonholes. Because these are knitted garments, the buttonholes are usually protected with some sort of hot glue-like substance to keep the fabric from running. And you want to make sure the buttons sit nicely in there, because over time, as these sort of slouchy garments age, the buttonholes can become loose, and then your buttons will pop open as you walk around. So you want to try to get ones where the button is firmly seated from the get-go. So I am on board now with shawl collar cardigans. I realize they can be more than Suburban Dad, Mr. Rogers. If you wear them in the right way, select the right type of shawl collar cardigan. They can be worn sartorially and in the stylistic sort of way. Let me know what your thoughts are on shawl collar cardigans. Tell me in the comments, how do you wear them? Um, 
what do you like or dislike about them. Follow us at Gentlemen's Scholars Club as well for more discussion of classic menswear items as well as brands and style advice. As always, thank you for watching.